Hi, it's John here from Cheap Esher and welcome to the latest walk and talk. So I'm going to take you on a walk today with another GPS unit. And the GPS unit I'm going to be taking you on a walk today with is the SatMap Active 20, the touchscreen and button screen GPS unit from SatMap. And what am I going to do? I'm going on a 15.2 mile walk or just over 15 mile walk from Rothbury. We're actually last weekend in lockdown so i'm going to try and stay local so i'm starting in rothby where gps training is based and we're going to do a where well, i'm going to go up the old railway line this is the old railway line the old rothby branch line i'm going to head out to what's called the lee i'm going to cut what's called the lee gorge up onto st oswald's way cut back from spy law up onto the top of simon's side go along the simon's side ridge and drop back down to the river coquet and come back along the river coquet back in to rothby so it's a 15 mile walk and the gps that's going to be guiding me as i've already said is the satmap active 20. so it's the day before let's have a quick look at the route playing software with satmap they have some great software called expedition 2 which their route playing software is actually online um, and you really should be playing for the premium version. The premium version gives you lots of different map options down the bottom. So again, we can select, we can select the one to twenty five thousand map here, which will correspond to what we've got on our GPS units. Now we do have to pay for this, but again, if you can afford it, it's certainly worth the option. So many different ways of planning routes on Expedition Two. We're just going to go for the simple what we call direct routing. So we just go up the top create new routes and then literally we just click on the map every time there's a major corner we just click and you can see we start creating this waypoint it does have some various options on this like snap to trail etc we're just doing it in the uh, simplest way which is the um, which is the, the direct routing nice thing about this is we can actually just drag things if we make mistakes really When you finish, just press the escape key, which is, shows the end of the route, and that's all done there. So uh, we can just save all, or we can just actually save the particular route. So we can just save it there, brings it up, and then we can just call it uh, whatever we want. So we can call it SatMap Active 20. Okay, so we just save it there as well. So again, that saves it into the cloud, but the elevation data down at the bottom. What we can also do is then just export it. So there's two ways we can save it into the cloud and then we can uh, sync it via the Wi-Fi onto the unit, or we can export it as what's called a GPS, a GPX file. Uh, so we can do that there. So we walk and talk Rothbury. Um, so again, call whatever you want, and then you can just export it. Again, nice thing is that you can actually use this for Garmin units as well as uh, SatMap units, because Garmin's, as you may know, are limited to 250 waypoints, uh, but the SatMap is not limited to anything. So we can just export that down here as a GPX file. And then we can literally just drop it on the internal storage of our GPS device, and we're all ready to go. So, the SatMap Active 20. If you talk to anybody about any GPS unit, the key thing they'd say about the SatMap Active 20 is this HD screen. It's absolutely stunning. I've got 1 to 25,000 mapping on it. Again, there's what's called a platinum version, and there's also the 1 to 50,000 version. So you really need to buy it with ordinance survey mapping. So it's a stunning three and a half inch HD screen. You can see as I zoom in, the clarity of that map just keeps there. Now I know I'm in the shade here, we'll look at it when we're out walking in the sunshine. So again, the key thing is this clarity of this HD map. It's actually second to none. You can't get, and don't see anything else like on any other outdoor GPS unit currently on the market. It's IP68 rating. So again, I think that means it can be submerged for about one and a half hours. So again, very high rating. It's both a buttons and a touchscreen GPS unit. So again, you can see I can press the plus or I can use the buttons on the side 
so therefore you can use it with your gloves on you can switch off the uh, touch screen unit uh, if it's raining and wet and just use the buttons or alternatively on a nice sunny day like today we can use both the buttons and the touch screen it's got the gorilla glass which is really what we see on most gps units and the other thing as well it uses the galileo it's the european satellite you can see it's got a good strong satellite signal there very good satellite signal because it uses the galileo as well as the other satellite system so overall really nice gps unit again dead easy to navigate around just press this little page button and you kind of go through the page numbers again if you if you look it's actually based on a, on a windows operating system so again you can kind of once you understand that you see the way it boots up etc and other black screens it's just like a windows computer when it's booting up so let's get on and get walking with it what do we need to do we need to reset our uh, track so again we just go to our, uh, our trip computer page and as long as everything is zero we can just press the start Okay, so you can see us starting to count up now as we've started to do it. So it's starting to record our track. You can see also at the top, we get the little green play button, which tells us that our recording our track. Just note there, that's the battery um, setting, just that green there. And I've actually set a field up, so we've got 97% battery life. So we can see how that is. You can see the trip actually said we've moved 16 feet so far. We're not actually moving anything, but that's just because it's, it's struggling in this gorge where we are to get a satellite signal. Next thing we need to do is load that route. So again, we go into our, I say we go into the main menu. It shows the active map, it's the 125,000 mapping. Active route is actually nothing. So if we find the routes, we go to folders and we can find within the folders, the um, the, the the various ones. So here's, here's it is below the SatMap Active 20, walk and talk. And what you do on a SatMap, you activate it. So that's us now navigating the route. If we then go to our map page, we can see it's overlaid on the route there. Um, it's actually just a little bit north of where we are there, but actually we're going through the gorge and then we'll drop into it. So again, you can see the route above there and, and, and we can, we're going to walk along here and just join the route a little bit further up. That's not very good route planning, isn't it? I've actually planned the wrong place to start off with. Uh, hey ho, that's the way we go. So without further ado, let's get on get walking with our sat pack to 20. <laughs> First part of my walk is just taking me up what's called the old Rothbury branch line. This is the old railway line that used to come into Rothbury. Um, it used to be a tee off uh, from Scotts Gap. So people know the area. There's a very famous uh, railway called the Wanny line that used to come from Morpeth across, across the Wannies and used to, I think, end up at West Woodburn. And there was a, uh, the branch line came off or the Rothbury branch line came off at Scotts Gap. So Scotts Gap, uh, where you might know there's agriculture merchant there. Now at the old station, um, there's a branch line came off all the way to Rothbury. Um, it actually ended up at Rothbury. It was intended to go up into Scotland. Uh, with a lot of these things, they kind of ran out of money, didn't they? Across, and they can't really see it. On the other side of the river here is Cragside. So this is Cragside, the former home of Lord Armstrong. First house to be powered by electricity from hydro-powered electricity. Uh, there's some lakes up on the top called Nelly's Moss. And the by gravity used to affect, um, drop through some turbines it's a power the house by um, electricity if you've been to Northumberland more than likely you've been to Cragside this is the most popular National Trust property in the northeast of England so more than likely you'll have visited there and that's the high ground behind me with Nelly's Moor so Rothbury branch line and Cragside behind me what a lovely sunny day it is absolutely stunning so let's have a quick look at the navigation experience so sat my back to 20 keep saying this and the key thing about this unit is this HD map absolutely stunning completely different screen technology than we see on any Garmin GPS unit so this is more like the screen technology we find in your mobile phone or your tablet a backlit screen so therefore we get that clarity so when we zoom in it's HD we can just zoom in and zoom out and that keeps that again really nice fast processor that will that, that will um, bring that map and, and focus it super quick so really nice there there's actually the platinum version so again i can just pass here press go through to the map says there's a one to fifty thousand that's the one to two hundred fifty thousand. that's the street map which is one to ten thousand again fairly useless about in the countryside but good in the village we're back to that one twenty five thousand. so really nice how we can just go between each of those map sets again we don't have to zoom in and out we can just choose which map set we want it on but the negative side of it is with this kind of screen technology in bright sunshine if i hold that up to the sunshine we're going to struggle to see it you know we really we can st i can still see it it's still okay but it's just like looking at your mobile phone in bright sunshine now there's what you can do and do is just turn it just shade it and it's okay so there's no reason that you can just turn shade it in your body 
and then you can see it so again there's pros and cons we've got the it's less good in the bright sunshine but again there's no reason we can't just turn it shade it and we're better there but then the positive side is we get this um, quality hd screen in this satmap active 20. real key point where a GPS really comes in. Look where I am now. I'm heading towards the Simon Side Hills, but we can see here. I'm actually heading up to join St. Oswald's Way. I think it's just going to be where those trees are on the high rise. And I think that's going to be Spy Law. I'm just kind of guessing there anyway. So I'm kind of here. Look, 360s. There's just no path. There's absolutely no path where you go. So you might look and go, oh, well, there you are on the horizon. There might be a path there. Well, there might be a path there. You've not got a clue. But by looking on your GPS unit, any GPS unit, you can see exactly where I am. So I'm on the right of way walking across this field. So again, I've got this, this what's called track up. So it's pointing the direction I'm walking in. And I'm literally directly on the right of way. So without this, I can kind of look and go, well, do you know what? I can use my judgment and go, that looks like the path rising up in the distance. I can come back, look at myself on the map and make sure so you can see actually i went wrong here because i missed this path you can just see there i can actually just scroll the map across you can see where i went wrong when i came through this gate here i went wrong and quickly i could look and go oh, i missed that path i could trespass sorry about that back across the field back to my right away which i'm on there's absolutely nothing under my feet so without a gps unit you really quite struggle to get across this field. The lovely thing about the sat when you use that where I scragged himself across to get back, just press this bottom left hand button, it takes you back to where you want. So I'm actually off the path on there. You can see I want to go a little bit to my left, and that takes me back on the path. So again, I'm walking completely blind, there's no path onto my feet, and I'm walking solely using my GPS units with my navigation there. Now, actually, I can look now. I think where I'm heading for is there's a gate just on the horizon there. So just watch through this bit there. I can use my GPS because I've got 125,000 mapping. I've got the extra detail. I can see I'm heading towards the fence line. There's my fence line ahead of me. Again, I can use this sat map, drag myself forward, look at where I'm going. Again, to get back to where I want, just press this button and it takes me back to where you are. So really classic example of when you're walking through a field like this, this is literally keeping me on track because there's no track under my feet. I'm at you. Spy law. So you can see behind me, Spy law. It's actually a, a, a scout hut or scout uh, camp for Blythe Valley Scouts. There's a sign up there, Blythe Valley Scouts. It's actually in the middle of nowhere. I'm not being funny. We've got you know, Lord and Shaw's um, back that way, I would say, mile and a half, two miles. Harwood in that direction is going to be three, four miles on St. Oswald's Way. Uh, actually, on St. Oswald's Way now. And it's just in the middle of the I've walked past here so many times. I've never seen a scout here ever, uh, but I suspect we'll come here every so often. I think with the, the local lockdown, we've not, uh, we've not been here for a little while, but it's a fantastic location. Spy law in the middle of nowhere. Again, it's on St. Oswald's Way. Um, if you can hunt it out, it's certainly worth a quick look at. So just before we have lunch, I'll have a quick look through the page and just see some of the stats. So again, there we are on the 1 to uh, 25,000 maps. I've just, just come off the footpath a little bit said to, to visit spy law um let's go through the pages so we can again press this go through the pages we've got our grid reference there we've got latin long as well um our trip log so right at the top 7.37 so we'll say it was just over 15 miles so we're just under halfway time now 12 42 trip time 12 was 20 
82% battery life. So we've used what um 16% battery 16% battery life in in two and a half hours. And I've been playing with it quite a bit, which is good. Height above sea level, sunset, sunrise. That's all your trip computer and the elevation data today. So uh, you can see that there. Again, this is our main menu. So we've got the ordnance survey map, and this is the active route that we're following, which is the walk and talk. Uh, search, which we can search for various things. Compass page we've looked at already. Um, and then Wi-Fi network. So one thing I'm not mentioned here, one of the nice things about the sat map is when you're at home is you can log on to your local Wi-Fi, both for your updates of the unit and also when you plan your routes on Expedition 2, you can sync them into the cloud and then sync the cloud with this. So you can bring um, your, your routes and tracks and other things directly onto the unit using Wi-Fi um, at home. Um, that's the yeah, shared data, you can share things as well. And then the satellite signals. So look at this. Accuracy, A double C at the bottom, three feet accuracy. Truly stunning. There's a satellite seal, shows you grid reference at the top, height above sea level. Again, let's just see, we've got battery level top right hand corner, battery level top right. This shows the, the map settings that we've got, the different maps. That knows which shows we're recording our track. This shows we've got a satellite signal. Um, and this shows our satellite strength. So again, it can't get much better. Three feet accuracy. That's just truly stunning. It shows you the satellites in the sky, doesn't it? So again, it gets our time. So there's the time there, a UTC time, which is the satellite time. That's where we get the satellite, the time from the satellites. And then that brings back to my page. Again, anything you, when you, on any page that you're on, you always get this dot here, don't you? So whatever page you're on, just press this dot and that takes you back to the map page. Again, let's just have a look through the map set. So again, that's one to 25,000. 1 to 50,000, you'll see the inaccuracy of the 1 to 50,000 ordnance survey mapping. That's there. Um, that must be the base map. It just say base map at the top. Um, that's the 1 to 10,000 street view. So that's really the same as the top active mapping. That's the open source mapping. Um, again, a lot of people buy this sat map now without any mapping and they kind of end up with this mapping, which frankly is useless, isn't it? We need to, that's 1 10,000 street view. Um, you need to get some decent mapping on it. So that's 125k. And again, the key thing is, I keep talking about, there's another high res on this. So again, you can zoom in and zoom out on it. So it's truly stunning. And there's our track. Because we're a little bit off, we've got track. So when we're out, we can press this and this brings up the boxes. We've set this up, so we've got heading elevation, the elevation data at the top. And then this brings up uh, various boxes as well there. And then this takes us through the different map sets. Again, we can set this up. Um, we're actually track up at the moment. But again, if we press this, it goes to north up and track trail up or they call it trail up it's track up isn't it really so that's your basic navigation of the sat map active 20. sun's out it's lunchtime i can spot my bench over there that's why i've come here to spy low for my lunch and we have a spot of lunch <laughs> dropping back down into the valley bottom. So we're back on the lowlands. As right, so we just trap back down to the river Coke and then we're gonna follow the coconut back into the village. So one thing we always discuss on these walks is how we carry the GPS units. So sat map active 20, it's actually a nice size to carry in your hands. And then I've also got the, the little carry case there. The little carry case 
is how I carry the sat map active 20. Now, carry case, just one thing to be aware of, it is, is it's quite a wide band here on the case. So you really need to be on the wide bit of your rucksack strap. So this is the, my wide bit of the rucksack strap. And as it comes onto the front, it goes a little bit narrower. And if you put it onto the narrow bit of the front, you can see the case kind of moves around too much. So you need that wide band on your rucksack strap for it to sit on. So again, um, you need, I say, it's in some ways it's better because it tends to be more around the side and then it doesn't catch on your legs as you go up and down. So well, as you go up and down as your legs move, it's quite a good thing to have it more onto the side. So let's get the Sam Active 20 out. We'll have a quick look at what we've been doing. So here we are, Sam Active 20 screen. So uh, hopefully you can see what this is called away to our, let's put it across. It's called Wool's Hoff. Wolves off is away to our left. So if you listen to my walk and talks in the past, you'll know what a hoff is. We describe this on the, when we're out with the 66 side, don't we? A hoff is a flat area next to the river. So there must have been wolves here in the past. So yeah, wolves off. There you are. Anyway, back to the GPS unit. So here we are, we can see our track, the red dotted line behind, and then our route is the red one in front with the arrows on it. So we can see where we're traveling. Um, and we've got either north up, or track up or trail up it says um, track up and then that's us without the circle is so we're coming across this field branch so you can see coming across the gate which is just above just ahead rather and that's what we can see on the gps unit let's go to our trip computer which shows that so far from 13.6 miles it's taken four hours 45 minutes um battery lever truly stunning look at that it's there it's near full there you know we've put this field 73 percent battery life left we've been going for four and an in of five hours haven't we? we've been playing around with it a lot in those five hours so really that's five ten twenty hours of battery life that's not bad going is it really not bad going at all so let's have to wing on the way through this gate So there's the day, moving time, moving average, um, average moving 3.4 miles an hour, speed now 3.1 miles an hour, overall average 2.9 miles an hour maximum speed, elevation, and then we can see the elevation graph down the bottom of what we've drawn. So that's our high point, which is the top of Simon's side, and we're dropping back down to where we are there now at the bottom. So you can see how we've climbed a maximum of 1,354 feet, which is down at the bottom minimum 242 feet we've climbed in total just over 2,000 feet 2,027 feet it is in total all right so that's our main menu page search we don't need compass again don't forget when we're navigating the compass that's our electronic compass three axis compass on the sat map which means it doesn't have to be kept flat like a traditional compass again it does need calibrating and then that's our point so again if you just want to see which direction you're on a walk in you can follow the pointer there and where we go and back to the compass page and I think the last one our wi-fi network sorry shared data gps status but well, we've still got a three meter three foot accuracy so it's just over a meter isn't it it's just stunning really and we're back to our map page all right just to kind of look around and this is wolves off where well, you know wolves here today i think there's plenty of sheep just about to lamb because the end of march and Lambing's just around the corner. So we've got the Ladies Bridge just ahead, uh, which takes us over the River Coquit. And we head back into the village. <laughs> the end of the walk the uh, the route actually just finishes a few hundred yards a bit further up the river we're actually just at the where the uh, the bridge is in Rothby so I thought I'll just stop walking here and then I can just cut back up that way so just join the end of the walk here so what do we do we need to just uh, stop that navigation so it's exactly the same we just go back into our um, main page where it's the, got the it shows the active route and um, we just go to folders and then we can just go to deactivate, oh, sorry, internal storage, routes, select, walk and talk, Rothbury, select, and there's it there. So it's there, We've got a little tick next to it, we can just tap on it, and then we just deactivate the route. 
okay we still got our track there so there's no problem there we're still recording the track which is the red dotted line behind so what we need to do then is uh, we've got deactivated it so what we need to do is just go to our main computer now our main trip computer so we just go back through our pages page 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 status back to our trip log and then we just literally press the stop button all right stop buttons there and that stopped everything that we've done so we've done 15.2 miles five hours 15 and there's all the information you can see at the top now that little play green play is now the uh, looks like a pause sign and then we've got press the actions buttons so because actions and what we can do is save and clear so we then save and clear Go back down the bottom and press select. Okay, are you sure you wish to clear your trail? Yeah, so we just click yes. So saving the track that we've created, saving it, and then it's cleared it there. And there's our track being saved, which is 15.3 miles long. And there it is overlaid on the Auden survey map. I very much hope you've enjoyed the latest walk and talk with myself, John, from GPS Training. And that was all about the SatMap Active 20. If there's another unit you'd like me to cover in future episodes, please do put, put a note in the comment box below. And again, if there's any specific feature within that unit, again, you would like me to cover, please do, and I'll, I'll cover that in future episodes. So it's my last Rothbury uh, walk and talk because actually next weekend we can go a little bit further afield because lockdown finishes. So I'm gonna head a little bit further up into the Chivia Tills and I'm going to do some uh, a walk and talk with another GPS unit. So again, if you have any feedback or comments about anything you would like me to cover in future ones, please do leave it in the comments box below. And thanks very much for watching.